In this video, we bring you dips and tricks for West Coast Swing. What's up, gang? It's Brian B. And Miss Megan. And I need to make sure my microphone's on. You're good. That's we're good to go. So we're going to bring you dips and tricks. So in this video, we're going to run through uh, some, we're going to run through dips, obviously. And then tricks, what are tricks? We're going to run through something called rides. We're going to deal with drops and some swings, some monkey bars. And we're going to do this in a, like a little bit of a tag team style. And since we've got just two sets of microphones, there's only going to be one tag in, tag out. So Miss uh, Emily and Benjamin will be here for the back half of the video to cover that spot. But let's start. If you have questions, you can type them in and Mr. Ben will feed them out to me in my segment, which will run about the first 15 to 18 minutes. So we're going to deal with basic dips. So what are we talking about when we deal with a basic dip? If we're talking West Coast Swing, it would look like this-ish. That would be a basic dip. And then we're also going to cover, we'll do the same thing again. We're going to cover a dip that turns into a ragdoll dip. I have no idea why this is called a ragdoll dip, but it is. So we're going to actually do this from behind because I want to explain the first setup to, there's a couple of basic setups um, to a dip. Regardless of how you're going to get into it, we're going to get into it from the most standard way. But if we're using an inside turn, we go one, two. As Megan's turning in for three and four, three and four. I'm picking up her back to be able to set my position up to create the dip. So there's a bunch of different keys that I have to worry about and then we'll make sure that Megan gives you what you need to worry about on the follower side. So leaders, as I'm rolling this in, if we do these baby steps, I am going to look to put my fingers in the middle of her spine, right? That's going to do a couple different things. Number one, it's going to tell her to raise this elbow. So she's going to get that up and over my hand. Number two, it's going to put this in a closed grip from behind. That is going to be my first key grip. So that's my priority as I start rolling her in. One, two, whatever this is, I roll it into this position. Second part, we're going to go straight middle of the camera. Second part I'm going to do, there's a bunch of different ways to do this with this hand. I can put this up here. I can put this down low, but the most secure is to put this, what I say is in my back pocket. Like I'm trying to have Megan reach into my back far right pocket. That's going to let me get a pretty secure uh, grip on this side. And again, there's a bunch of different grips we can use. We can use behind the arm, that's probably the most standard, or even across her back, but something that's supporting her from behind. So if we look at that coming at the camera, we roll in one, two, I pick my right hand up, three and four. I take this and I tuck it into my pocket. So at this point, she's secure towards me. Now, I'm gonna support her from behind this arm. With this left foot, I've had to do something different with my footwork, I'll cover that in just a second, but I'm gonna take this foot diagonally behind her, right? I don't wanna be on my side because if I stay on my side, Miss Megan's gonna fall out here and there's no one home. I'm gonna step diagonally behind her, so what happens is, is I now have something supporting her underneath. So the neat thing about this is because I've tucked her hand, she can hold on. My leg is underneath her. I could leave her here, <laughs> not all day, because it's Megan's tough. leg will Megan's totally give out. Megan's leg will give out. Yeah, so Action. we do this, again, from a couple different angles. The key is for the leaders, and we'll go into what goes on for the followers. Leaders, my hand is, needs to pick up her back. My left hand needs to feed this around my back. That's the safest option. Let's scooch back and behind. I want to take this left foot and step it preferably diagonally so there's something behind her. So as I dip her, if all things went wrong, my leg is underneath. If I did this back the other way, my right hand pick up first. I tuck it in. Cool, let's scooch back to the middle of the camera. Just bothers <laughs> me when I'm not in the middle of the camera, right? I'm going to take this and support her somewhere behind here. I like underneath the arm because that keeps her close to me. I reach out across with my left leg and then we can start to dip her. So what are you thinking? What are the keys that you do to not screw it up? I'm trying to decide which side to go from. Um, so followers, when we are rolled into this. Go this, this way. That way okay. you can be in the front. Cool. Um, when we're rolled into this, it doesn't necessarily mean a dip at this point right here. Um, so this could mean anything in close position. It could be a run around, anything else. You're paying attention to uh, your leader connecting to your back for sure. But then when the leader tucks this into their back pocket area, then you kind of know that this is a dip and you are closer to your partner. All right. Um, and then from here, if you're comfortable down here with your hand, totally fine. 
I have a tendency to actually kind of grip sometimes, especially if they have my arm. Uh, if they have my back, I will keep my arm lower. The very, very important thing for dips. When you are dipping, if you dip and your hips are back, Ooh, good it makes you extremely heavy and your partner might fall over on you. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about like if you're connected to me in this position, right? If you sink your hips back, what happens? Totally yeah. <laughs> if, if Megan has an amount of ability that... Is that and what again, you wanted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, not all of us. We've got some students that are super back flexy, and I feel like I, I don't even need to be there because they fold right over. But the idea is by keeping your hips up, up and forward, right? you have an amount that you can go all by yourself. So even if Megan doesn't go very far, but she has an amount she can go by herself, <laughs> right? That at this point when I'm all hooked in, I can then take Megan what we call off weight. Meaning if this is her center point of balance right here over her foot, can you pop back up there for me? Up where? Just standing right here, right? If this is, we're all tucked in, she's close to me physically, right? She's not far away from me. That keeps the weight centered over me. I'm going to step diagonally behind her and then what's going to happen is I've got control of her and I will take her what we call off weight. So at this point here, Miss Megan's off weight, she's relying upon me, right? My legs underneath her, this could be my arms. But what happens, let's do the demo just so we Which see demo? the hips sunk down. Oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so if we get I here, right, I can do it. and Megan starts to sink her hips, she becomes heavy like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> like a sack of potatoes. Isn't that, is, that's the right, that's the correct terminology. Yeah, it's better than an elephant. So regardless, I don't want you to get stuck on, ex then this is a tried and true method of where we put our hands. Um, and it comes from the fact that <clears throat> not only do we compete professionally, but we teach wedding couples and people that don't have a lot of experience dancing and we need to give them a fail proof way of doing it. So there's tons of different options of where the hands goes and how we pick them up. But the concepts are the most important. Concept being, if we're doing it this way from the camera, we'll go this way, this Megan's. Way? Yep. Concept, I'm picking Megan up, and the idea of this is I'm collecting her to me, right? Because the further she gets away, the heavier she's going to get, right? Number two is I'm supporting her, and I'm taking her off weight. She's balanced. She's adding a little bit of weight to my hand. She's connected to me, but I'm the one that's deciding where we're going to go. Does that make sense? So those are the principles. As the follower, you want to stay tight and collected. Hips up in Hips general. Up, very important. Here's one more thing that I actually tell my wedding couples. Um, when you are rolling into this, you want to try to land a little bit closer to the front foot, or the, sorry, the, this Good foot, <laughs> the point. first foot, than the back foot over here, because this is going to take your weight far past your partner. Good point. So if we think about principles, right, and I'm going to do this back to the camera. Megan brought up a good thing because this is a pretty fundamental principle. I'm making sure that Megan's on my right side, right? Why? Because we're going this way and I want to be able to move and have something of a base on this side. The further she is to my other side, right, there's nothing that I can do to support her other than just hold on and muscle her. Then you want to sit. <laughs> <clears throat> right. And just put yourself down carefully. So that's the principle. And now it's just like West Coast Swing. When something doesn't happen, whose fault is it? Both. Both. Both, right? Because if one of us were able to correct for the other one, then the problem would have happened. So Megan's job is to, in the dip, roll in and stay on my right side. I will also use my footwork to make sure, and this is again, not the only way you can do this, but I do four walks into this. One, two, three, four, because I can step this foot wherever I need to, to make sure that Megan's on the correct side before we go into the dip. Any questions for the basic dip? Boom, you got it. So now we're gonna go into the rag doll, which is nothing more than extension of the dipped position. We roll Megan in, we secure everything down, we drop her in this position. Now we rotate this around <laughs> and pick her back up. Sorry, I got stuck. I don't know what was so funny. It worked great. We do it from the back side. We collect her in. We make the dip. We ragdoll it around. We pick it back up. So action for the Stalling leader. Stalling there is not fun. Let me tell you. <laughs> action for the leader from the back side. I'm going to get you out of my way for a second. Oh, okay. We roll her in, right? This foot's free, we take the dip, we've got her supported. Now basically I'm, I'm shifting my weight around 
to my right foot and I'm standing up on my right foot so she's collected on that my right side. So again, when I'm dipped to my left foot, I'm gonna shift everything around. My feet might actually move on the floor a little bit with my dance shoes and I pick her up on her foot. What goes on for the <laughs> follower? Hips up. Hips up. <laughs> you get to narrate this upside down. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, so followers, once you get in here um, and you notice that your leader is taking you around, it is very, very important that you keep your hips up. And I actually tend to almost sit on the leg because it is a little bit easier <clears throat> to make sure that my hips are up. Um, Can we do it sideways? Yes. Sit on my leg, go ahead. <laughs> How about we just get into it? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, my weight is really <laughs> far <Thank> back here. <laughs> we actually had a student that uh, almost went toppling backwards because their weight was so far that way. Yeah. So again, the principles, right? She's still connected to my right side. She's still collected towards me, right? And my, like when Megan kind of felt like she was falling a little bit, mm -hmm. is she's also holding herself on me. Not required, right? We can do this in a competitive instance we do this like hands free and we do all that business but again the principle is now i've got two hands and i'm keeping her secure to me to not fall over to i should drop you just to see what not <laughs> not to do uh maybe not no maybe, know, not. maybe a back walker who knows no um yeah but followers if you do not um if you don't feel i don't want to say safe secure. you secure. don't feel as secure you can totally hold on you can even like um kind of hook behind, it's only going to allow you to go so far back. Correct, so like we said before in the dip, there's what we call on weight and off weight. And like on weight would be, can you do like a little bit of the, the, the rag doll just kind of on weight? I'm just spotting you. Like no, how I should be? Yep. Hips up? No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's an amount that she can do that on weight, right? <laughs> We're just having fun here. Go. <laughs> so on weight would be whatever I have in my own Ability. Oh, God. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> sorry. Bad back. Technically, now yeah, we're all broken over here. Um, technically, I can do this move on my own, but with a partner, it allows you to go a little bit extra. Cool. So that is your dips, including your basic dip and your ragdoll. Second thing. Oh, Third we do have thing. a question. Yes. So in dips in the ragdoll, Megan, do you ever drop your head weight? Oh, great question. My great head. question. Your head weight. <laughs> yes. Do you want to repeat the question? Yes. So. Does Megan ever drop her head weight? This is what we mean. I'll explain. <laughs> In so, the ragdoll, is that what the question was? Either, either the dip or either the ragdoll. Either dip. Yes, my head will go back. Oh, or around and back. What about yep. Yes. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing, the head weight. And actually... I mean, don't make yourself look like, you know, you've been decapitated. It will look, <laughs> it will look the most awkward if you try to reorient your head up and down. Yeah. We'll have so Megan. just go naturally we'll into Megan. it. I'll dip you. Try to orient your head upright, like, like this? upright, like you're like yeah, either upright or straight at the audience. Oh. I mean, if it's on the right angle, oh, that's a yeah. <laughs> so a natural place would be to keep it off of your spine. So as your spine moves back, it stays with it, mm -hmm. and it would continue to follow that natural arc. Back yeah, with your hips moving up, if you think of all this reaching up and over. It'll create a nice arc for you. Like yoga, which Emily doesn't like. I don't like yoga either. Oh, I like it. Not anymore. I am not the only one. Cool. So now we have, real quick for oh, the, the transition, the any more questions on the dip? So rides. These are um, less common than the dips and even the drops in the monkey bar. But since we have to deal with the two microphone deal, we're going to put the rides right here in this spot uh, from the whip. So this would be one kind of option. We have another one that would come off of um, duck. Off of the duck, where we tuck in and we could ride around. We could even get fancy. Is it this hand? Oh Lord, no. Oh it's yeah. We could even get fancy into these positions where we step, and there's these dealios. Oh my leg. <laughs> <laughs> So we've been practicing some things a little bit. Again, there's a couple different ones and you guys, we've done some pro uh, breakdowns, one with John uh, Lindo years ago. We did another one, we broke down a Jack and Jill on our champions breakdowns. But the yes. concept is this, if we use the whip, because that might be the most, the easiest or the most common, right? We're dancing a whip and we kind of kick Megan's leg out, right? Then we have to ride this momentum around. 
So the key to this is actually relatively simple conceptually, but very hard to do. So anytime we are running around one another, we actually have to keep our centers faced to one another and we have to stay away, connected, connected right? So as, like what I would do in my basic position is the same thing that I'm going to do in my ride. <laughs> That's the basic position. So you can literally just set this up, stand on one foot from Miss Megan. The energy is a little bit harder to create this way, but conceptually that's the idea, right? We're connected away. Now as I'm walking around, I have to feel like I'm feeding my left side. So we call this, we're walking forward in the direction of turn. So here's what I mean. I'm gonna leave Miss Megan, she's a pole. I don't wanna walk forward this way, right? Because I'm not walking in the direction of turn. I wanna walk in the direction of my turn. So I feel like my left side is always progressing forward, but if you look at me, I'm actually quite stacked up, right? So your thought process is? Really stay connected. And I wanna make sure in things like these rides that I'm still um, forward in the direction toward my partner, because if I let myself go too much, I will fall out of that connection. So that's squared up feeling. So if we get into yep. this again, boom, right? I feel very much like my left side has to stay forward in this. Ooh. Question. How do you lead that? How do I lead that? <laughs> it's a whip. It is, it is a whip, which I could, I've seen people kick the leg out. They kick the leg out to create the energy. Um, I think as long as you collect this hand right here, Ooh. right? And then you begin that prop. I feel some momentum from this side sending me through. Boom. But I've seen people do it where they, they kind of. Yeah, they can totally kick that They kind of hunker down here and they kick the leg out and then ride Ooh. that energy around. Bingo. That is the lead to the kick the leg out, or at least the feeling of doing that. I don't think you have to literally do it. I don't think so. I've seen people that actually kick the leg out. <laughs> there are people that do kick it. <laughs> yeah, but that's the idea, right? If I'm, if I'm connected here and to some degree, I'm cutting Megan off mm -hmm. with my energy because I need to shorten that connection. Cause she's thinking triple step. If she tries a triple step right here and she's connected to me, she can't, right? If she screws up her connection, she can go back. But at this point, boom, we're connected away. Now I have to connect my left side forward and off we go. Ooh, this is fun. Yeah, the, and the tighter, <laughs> that's, you know what that was? Literally, the tighter I make this circle as the leader, the faster it will go. I like these. Cool beans. What was our other one? Oh, from the duck. Same concept, right? There's an, a, a myriad of different ways, but this is another common position That we're going to get into. Uh, it's the same thing. Exact same concept, right? Towards your partner. So even though this is super complicated because it has a turn and a duck and this position, right? We're connecting ourselves away, right? And then as that leg starts to go behind her and I start to go around the corner with my right side, boom. Yep. And the final Coming thing, I guess, from the leader's perspective is. Um, being aware of your followers weight when you come back up. So I'm going to go back to the dip yes. and in like a ragdoll dip, I'm basically, I'm putting her on her right foot. That's her right foot uh -huh. all the way around to her left foot. And I'm going to control her weight. Like literally she has no choice but to be on that foot. So I'm controlling which foot she's on. So even though we're doing something like this, right? Boom, 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 boom. When I'm done, I'm putting her on that foot in so much as she's on that foot and I've also stopped her to not take the next step back. I'll let her take it back and off we go. So there's your dips, your rides, a uh, couple different versions. And now we have our drops. Who wants to join us next? So Emily and Ben are going to come up. They're going to bring you um, drops and like monkey bars swings, uh, mostly because, and this is, these are super common, uh, especially the drops now, very, very common. I don't do a lot of them. I've had a bad back for a number of years and I've found that because people do these incorrectly, um, where they follow some of the pros that, that have a great deal of athletic ability and do these really, really well, they do them, they drop their hips, they do them wrong and it causes a lot of um, issues for me as the leader. So, Miss Emily, yeah, you're up. Cool. Take it away. I'm going to switch mics out. Ben's going to hop in. Cool. So Ben and I are going to do um, one of the most common drops, the monkey bar, um, or I guess that's more of a trick, and then a drop that we see quite a bit 
coming from outside turns. So these are a little bit more tricky uh, than the simple dips, but the rides that you just saw, they're almost as cool as that. So when Ben joins me, we're gonna show them, we'll show the monkey bar first from a couple of different options, and then we will do our other dip from an outside turn. How are we doing out there? Definitely not for beginners, Lori said. No. Nice red shoes. For her. I mean, for Brian. Oh, right on. So, um, if you do have any questions and we're not able to get to them in this session, we are going to do your questions answered. So go ahead and type them in to Brian and Megan, and they can um, get them ready for the next session. Ben is here now, so we are going to show the monkey bar. Megan has to get me in the camera. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so from the inside turn, do the monkey bar. One, two, three, and four, five, six. So from here, you'll see that a lot in Jack and Jill's and just in general dancing. From here, we're going to change our weight, and then we can go into whatever pattern is going to happen next. So. Um, from there, we also did it from a hip catch. We'll give you two different options. This side, so let's do the front. So one, two, three, and four, five, six. From here, we can again just change the feet, seven, eight, and then we can go from there. The other dip that we are going to do, or drop rather, is from an outside turn into a duck, into a drop onto the leader's leg that's so new. that's new let's go ahead and start with the monkey bar with the inside turn going from the other side so everyone knows an inside turn uh, Brian and Megan kind of went over it in the simple dip you're going to make sure that you find the connection on the back so that you can have the connection to go into the swing of the monkey bar. So let's go ahead and stop right before we do the trick. One, two, three, and four. From here, Ben has given me the option, or he's about to send me into the monkey bar. And how I know that is there is weight and a connection away here. What are you thinking about as the leader? Um, I'm thinking about, so we've made that connection as we're going into the three and four to end up here. I'm thinking about taking my center away and kind of down. I'm thinking more sitting. Um, if you stay up whenever you do this, she's gonna, your follow is going to end up pulling you over. So you definitely want to sit a little bit and then you send them through as you change your weight. Cool. So if we did that without stopping, we have one, two, three, and four. We connect five, six. There's a little bit of a hunkering down before the swing actually happens or the monkey bar happens. <laughs> um, and you can feel that it's very, very small, but it is there. So from here we have one, two, three, and four. So already we're kind of hunkered down a little bit and there's a little bit of a, um, not buoyancy, but bounce. Then from here, followers, depending on how tall your uh, leader <laughs> is, you may have to dip a little bit more than normal, but you don't have to dip too much. You don't have to go super far under, like you'll see some of the pros do, but you can go just right under the arm. So leaders, make sure that that arm is lifted and it doesn't drop when you're trying to do the trick. Yep, leaders for us, a um, couple of different ways to do the footwork. What I would recommend is to walk through it. So go one, two, three and then place four and be kind of split weight for four. The reason for that is because you want to be able to place this foot to the side, but you want to still be with your partner. And then you sit with your partner and then take your right side through in order to bring them back. Cool. So you can spend a little bit more time in the monkey bar if you are wanting to. Otherwise, just make sure that you uh, transfer your weight to your left foot for the follower, right foot for the leader after that. So let's go ahead and make this an eight count pattern. We're gonna spend a little bit more time in the monkey bar itself. So one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, eight. So my right foot's free, uh, the leader's left foot is free. Cool, so that's from the inside turn. Do you wanna do it the other way so they can see my footwork from the back? Sure. So from this angle, we have one, two, three, and four, five, six, 
six, seven, step eight. So my right foot's free, Ben's left foot's free. Cool, so from the hip catch, monkey bar from the hip catch. We have one, two, three, and four. Again, five, six, seven, eight. So you can take your time doing that or you can go right through. Depending on how comfortable you are with the monkey bar itself, you could kind of hang out there, swinging on the vine like a monkey, or <laughs> you can get right out of there, whichever you prefer. So let's try that again. We have one, two, three, and four. We have five, six, seven, eight. So followers, you're kind of in control of the timing at that point, depending on how long you want to stay in that position. Any questions? Um, I was going to ask this myself. Alfred says he learned the monkey bar where the leader tucks the follower right under the arm to initiate the monkey bar. How do you initiate the monkey bar? So if we take that from the hip catch, we come one, two, three, and four. From here, I'm sitting away, which helps build up the energy. And then I'm thinking, what I think is to take my right side through, and then I'm cupping my right hand as well, which is allowing me on the shoulder blade to send her through. And then there's very much a, I don't know what you call that motion, but it's kind of like an up and over motion with the right arm in order to help lead the follow through. So if we just go from there again, as we're doing this, then you can bring that up and through with her if you're leading her all the way through. If you're with somebody who knows what they're doing, you don't necessarily have to do that quite as much because once you initiate this, they're gonna go. But you do have to, oh, hi, how are you? I'm swinging. <laughs> um, on that point though, if the follow is going to stay, if we go back over here, if the follow is going to stay, leaders, we have to be paying attention because once we leave this here, I'm staying more split weight so that way I can support her as she does whatever it is she's gonna do on that side. Huh. Yes, and then once I come out of that, make sure you're not still holding on to the elbow. You do wanna get to the hand as soon as possible. So if we're in this position and I go underneath, if you feel me go down the arm, don't try to fight to keep more of a connection. This is more of what you're gonna need so that we can kind of feel out where each other might be in the pattern and then you can go from there after that. Cool, any more questions? What's the common mistake for followers in the monkey bar? The common mistake for the follower. Two, three, and four. Um, Hmm. Maybe to not duck our head a little bit more? Ooh. From my side, where people have tried to lead themselves through this, basically what Emily was saying, they don't remember to go down before they go forward. Yeah, so you have to bend your knees, and that's something that I think Megan talked about earlier in, the, in one of the other tricks. From here, we have that down position, I'm going to make sure that my head goes through, and leaders, that was the one thing that I mentioned to keep this lifted. So from here, as long as that head goes through and you don't leave it back this way, so you're limboing, keep it on top of your spine, it'll be much more successful. That answer our question? I think so. Alfred also said that he was taught to use the left arm to send her on the knee. Mm. There are multiple ways to do a monkey bar, for sure. You can. It can work. Um, I prefer not to, and the reason that I prefer not to is as I'm coming through, if I keep this left hand, it actually locks my left side to my partner more, so then I'm stuck here. If I let go of the left hand, then I have the ability to sit farther away without impacting my partner. So as I'm coming through, if I keep this left hand, yes, I can do this. And then you can feed this through 100%. Yeah, and there are other ways to get into the monkey bar, but this is going to be some of the options that you have to get into that trick. Yes. So do we have time for the other one? Go for it. All right, real quick. Okay, real quick. If you have any questions, you can answer in the next session. So from outside turns, let's do a double outside turn first. We have one, two, three, and four five and six. So if you're familiar with that concept and that pattern, that'll make this much easier. We're going to do one outside turn into a duck to go into the drop. So we have one, 
two, three, and four, and five, oh. six into the drop. And then we come back out. Thought we were doing the duck first, sorry. <laughs> Just the duck by itself. Oh, <laughs> now we're going straight into it. All right. So we have one, two, three, and four, and five, and six. So as you can see, <laughs> Emily's having some issues with the mics today. Thanks. You're welcome. What do you think about when you're doing this <laughs> as a leader? Um, so a couple of different things I have to think about as a leader. Um, typically, when we're bringing our follow through on an outside turn, we're going to let them spin past us, and then we're going to anchor on the other side. But if I let Emily spin past me, I'm not actually going to be able to catch her as she comes through. So if I let her continue past me and I try to do this, I'm way too far away. It's a different line. Yes. So we have to stay with our follows as we come through this. So one, two, three, and four, five. Another different uh, is I'm going to do three and four, and then I'm just going to step for five with my follow. Um, from here, we bring this back. And then I'm very much thinking of putting her on my leg. If you'll notice, I have my leg turned towards her. So she's sitting on the front of my leg. I do not have it turned to where she's sitting on the outside of my knee. You'll blow a knee doing that. Don't do that. Sorry. It's OK. <laughs> so um, followers, like Megan said earlier, you want to keep your hips up. And from here, I'm actually finding, like Ben said, I'm not finding the back of his knee or his leg. I'm finding the side or the forward part of his leg so that I can sit right on top. And then from there, you can either do a body roll up or you can just stand back up from that position. Yes. One thing on standing up from that in a second. Two, two, one, four. So as we're standing up from this leaders, we are not going to want to stand up on this leg and then try and go <laughs> over because it's not going to work. From here, we are going to move our weight over laterally shoop, and then stand up on that side. Cool. Any questions? We don't have time for questions. No <laughs> more questions. So we'll show it uh, this way and then back the other way. One, two, three, and four, five, and six as we come back. If you wanted to try and hit the one, you would start on the five. So you have five, six, and seven, and eight, uh, one. That's one way that you can accent the one with a drop. Cool. So um, we are going to, in just a few minutes, have our your questions answered. If you do have any questions from this session, or anything that we did over the week, or just a general question, please feel free to put them in the comments below, and then we will make sure to cover them in just a few minutes. Thanks, everybody.